Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is Petya 2.0, another ransomware. The big story by far today is another piece of ransomware that's spreading throughout the world very quickly. The new piece of ransomware is called Petya 2.0, or some researchers call it not Petya. Now, this is because it's actually related to an older variant of ransomware, originally called Petya, that came out in March of 2016. The original Petya was an interesting piece of ransomware in that it didn't only encrypt files on your system, but it actually encrypted something called your master boot record, the main part of your hard drive that actually starts the boot process. And by doing so, it made your entire computer inoperable. Now, Petya 2.0 is significantly different than the original, and one of the reasons it's more more widespread is it takes a page out of the book of WannaCry. Among other things, it leverages that SMB vulnerability called Internal Blue to help it spread within your networks. So here's a high level of what we know so far. Petya 2.0 started this morning mostly affecting organizations in the Ukraine. Things like their, their power grid, uh, airports, and even government organizations and banks. However, it started spreading throughout the world affecting companies in Spain and the United States and all over. At first, researchers weren't sure of how Petya 2.0 first infected its victims, but since then it's been seen primarily in phishing emails that contain malicious Word documents. And by the way, that Word document exploits a known vulnerability, a vulnerability in the way uh, Word documents actually process RTF files. And do know WatchGuard has a signature for this RTF uh, exploit as well. In either case, if you do interact with this Word document, it could run Petya 2.0 on your computer. Now, when Petya runs, one of the things it does is copy WannaCry and leverage that SMB exploit to try to spread throughout your network. But if that vulnerability is not available, it can also use some Windows tools like PSExec and so forth to also try to copy itself to other computers in your network. And this probably accounts for how it became so widespread. It really is a ransom worm, a lot like WannaCry. Now, like the original Petya, Petya 2.0 differs from normal ransomware in that it does not try to encrypt your actual files. Rather, it starts a scheduled job to reboot your computer within an hour, and when it does so, it's going to overwrite your hard drive's master boot record. This will make your computer so it can't boot into Windows. Rather, you're going to get a message on how you can pay a certain amount of Bitcoin, or approximately $300 worth, to get your computer back. So this is a pretty nefarious piece of ransomware because it makes your whole computer inoperable until you actually fix it. By the way, researchers know the wallet that this particular ransomware uses to extort its victims, and the industry as a whole has been tracking this wallet. So far, it seems the bad guys have only made a little over 8,000 US dollars in Bitcoin. However, to put that into context, uh, it took even longer for WannaCry to get its first Bitcoin compared to Petya 2.0, so it seems to be doing okay. Now, speaking of the ransom, here at WatchGuard, I always recommend against ever paying the extortion from these ransomware authors. Really, it only encourages these criminals to continue their malicious practices. That said, some people do sometimes pay the ransom, but that could be dangerous in the case of Petya 2.0. This ransomware has a hard-coded email address that victims use when they pay the ransom, and the providers behind that email address have locked it. So right now, there may be no way for you to get your decryption keys if you do pay the ransom for Petya 2.0. So how do you protect against this and other ransomware? Well, you've heard my spiel before. Basically, all the tips I gave in my WannaCry video still apply here. First of all, always back up. If you back up your systems, you may not have to worry about ransomware because you can recover your system. Second of all, patch your computers. This particular ransomware leverages some old SMB exploits as well as that Word RTF exploit. If you patch your computer, those exploits won't be available for these attackers to use. Finally, layered security is the only way you can really protect against these threats. Gateway antivirus helps. Advanced malware protection helps. IPS helps. None of these layers are always perfect, but combined, they give you the ultimate protection against threats like 
Petya 2.0. By the way, if you're a WatchGuard Firebox customer, our total security package or security services give you a perfect example of the benefits of layered security. As of now, our gateway antivirus can catch Petya. Our APT blocker caught it the moment it came out. Our IPS was able to prevent the SMB exploit that, that the NSA leaked, and even the new RTF word exploit that Petya uses with its malicious documents, we can also catch that with our IPS. So when you combine all these services together, you get many different layers of protection that can catch Petya at various moments in the kill chain. Now, all that said, I do want to talk a little bit about legacy AV versus advanced threat protection. Here at WatchGuard, we have many malware protection services, including gateway antivirus, which is really heavily dependent on signatures and other types of rules. And we have APT Blocker, which is our advanced malware protection service. It does not rely on reactive signatures. Rather, it leverages behavioral detection to find new threats that there is no signature for. I bring up these two malware detection protection services because there's a big difference in how fast gateway antivirus or a legacy AV service will catch malware compared to APT blocker or advanced malware protection. One good way to see this is to follow VirusTotal, which tends to track many different AV companies that often provide signature-based antivirus solutions. Our researchers, while we were analyzing Petya, monitored VirusTotal all day. At the beginning of the day, when I first looked around 8 a.m.-ish, only around 16 to 20 of the 61 AV vendors actually had signature-based detection to catch this threat. That's a lot of misses. Now, by the end of the day, that number jumped up to 43 of the 61 providers, but you should still see the point. In fact, early in the day, our own gateway antivirus missed it. We didn't actually start catching it with the signature until around 2 p.m. PST time. That said, APT blocker is the ultimate solution here. With our behavioral based detection, we were able to catch Petya right away. The point I'm trying to make here is in today's threat environment, you really need advanced malware protection like WatchGuard's APT blocker. In fact, just today we released our second internet security report for Q1 of 2017. One of the things we found is on devices that have both gateway antivirus and APT blocker, 38% so over one third of the malware detected required APT blocker. It was missed by the gateway antivirus service. So that shows you it's not just Petya 2.0 that gets missed early on. To really catch malware as soon as it comes out, be sure to use advanced malware protection. Now while I'm talking about protection, there's one other Petya 2 specific tip I can give to the pro users out there, and that's that this ransomware seems to have a kill switch. One of the security researchers analyzing it realized that Petya 2.0 looks for a file in your Windows directory called perfc without an extension. So one simple thing a pro user might do to avoid Petya is to create a blank file in your Windows directory called perfc. Now that's not going to do anything for any additional pieces of malware or new variants of Petya that come out, but it's an easy way that you might be able to avoid the one that's been spreading today. Anyways, it's interesting to see another ransom worm, one of our predictions from this year coming out. It's clear that the ransomware authors out there are trying to develop techniques that cause their ransomware to spread a whole lot quicker than they have in the past. But remember, if you back up, patch, and follow basic layered security practices, you should remain relatively safe from this and many other ransomware threats. Anyways, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.